All righty. Uh, all right. Welcome. This is session two of, um, you know, our rookie sort of introduction to lacrosse officiating. Um, we are going to cover kind of meat and potato stuff today. Really important stuff. Um, we're going to cover um, positioning, uh, out of bounds, substitutions. You're going to really get a feel for kind of the where you're supposed to be looking and where you're supposed to be on the field. Um, all right. Here. All right. Um, all right. We'll let people come in as they come in. Uh, as I always do, I will send you guys an email, hopefully tomorrow. Um, I have a pretty light day tomorrow at work, so I should be able to get this out. But if not, I'll send it out on Friday. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll sort of let me share my screen and I'll show you what we are going to do. All right. So, again, this is um, uh, this is our. Um, uh, GLOA 2024 rookie training document. Um, I will update this as we keep going. So you're always going to find everything here. Um, I should have a copy of uh, rules that you can peruse um, uh, hopefully by Friday um, uh, if, if my book gets here soon enough. All right. Um, you've got the GLOA game guide right here. You can click on that link, the USA Lacrosse Two-Man Mechanics. Um, uh, for those of you who have officiated other sports um, and have used Arbiter, it's our assigning system. It's how you get games and put your availability in. All the information you're going to need is in our game guide. Uh, you can look at uniform and equipment. Um, let me give you a brief sort of guide for uniform and equipment. Um, uh, if you go to our uh, website, galaxref.com, um, uh, you can go to this link right here and, uh, this is going to tell you all the stuff that you really need to know, right? So, um, it's really important that you have the proper uniform. Uh, I'm going to try to round up as many older shirts, guys who've retired, stuff like that. So we should have some equipment available for you on, um, the 20th, um, if you do football, it is the exact same shirt. So you should already have a long sleeve and a short sleeve. Um, if you do not do football, this is a place you're going to want to start to really collect stuff, right? Um, uh, you need a two inch striped shirt. It needs to have a pocket and it most definitely um, uh, needs to have the GHSA stuff all listed on it, okay? Um, uh, at the bottom of this, you can find... Um, Places that you can go. I'm kind of a Honigs guy. I've been dealing with Honigs for years. Um, but Zebra Wear, Ump Attire, Cliff Clean, those are all great places to get um, stuff. The only store that is a physical store where you can get stuff in Atlanta is called Four Seasons Sporting Goods. It's down by the airport, right? Um, so that's where you're going to want to go to check that stuff out. Um I will be asking you guys um, for your sizes. Um, uh, actually, I'll send you a link out tomorrow um, uh, and I'm going to get you uh, green summer shirts. Um, this is the stuff we wear when we're doing youth games or we're doing um, uh, uh, summer tournaments, stuff like that. We don't want to wear the official GHSA stuff, right? Um, it's what this, it's what Tony Rouse, one of our assigners is wearing right here. We tend to wear a white hat and the sort of, you know, safety yellow, you're not going to get lost in the woods. Don't worry about it when you're wearing this bad boy. Um, uh, that's what we wear in the, in, for youth games. Um, but, um, uh, what you're going to want to get and make sure that you have is you're going to want to make sure you have black shorts, right? You don't need to spend a lot of money on these. You do not want 1973 coaches shorts, right? The little, you know, the real showing all that thigh. Um, you just want a pair of golf shorts, basically. And you can find some really cheap ones on Amazon. You don't need to spend a lot of money. You need to have a belt loop. That is key. A belt loop is key, right? 
Um, you're going to need a, an all black belt. You'll need all black ankle socks. Um, anything you wear underneath your undershirt should be black. Your compression shorts should be black, right? You don't need to spend the money on the Under Armour. Nobody's going to see it, right? Um, if you want to, go right ahead. Um, but the, the striped shirt, long sleeve and short sleeve, um, you need a black pinstripe hat. Um, the same thing that the NFL guys wear or the, or the football officials wear, not the white one, right? We wear a white one in the summer. White one in the summer can be just a white hat. It can have, you know, the Nike swoosh. It can say USA lacrosse. You can actually go on our gear store and buy one that has the little GLOA shield on it, but it doesn't matter. As long as it's not a logo of a team you are officiating, you can wear any white hat. Okay. Um, your shoes should be all black, right? Um, you know, I just bought a new pair of shoes. I'm going to black out the white stuff on them with a magic marker. I just keep a magic marker with me. Um, but you don't want that big white heel, right? Looking like you know what you're doing and looking like a professional is the best way to get through. Not your first year, not your second year, but like your 290th year of doing this, right? If you don't look like you know what you're doing, it's going to be a long day at the office, okay? Um, so putting your uniform together is going to be really helpful. Um, uh, right? So undershirt, long pants, right? You do not, you can't use the football pants that have the white stripe. You just need a pair of black pants, right? Um, again, I tend to look for like the lightweight nylon, you know, you know, fake fabric, um, golf pants. Um, uh, and you know, if it gets really cold, I'll, I'll wear long johns underneath them. Um, and I'll, you know, long john underneath stuff. Jacket is going to be an all black jacket. It can have a little, you know, Nike logo right here, but an all black jacket, it can have a hood. It cannot have a hood. It doesn't really matter. Um, if you're looking for a jacket, you can go on the GLOA gear store and you can find one there, but they tend to take a little while to get here. So you want to jump on that sooner rather than later. Um, right. Fox finger whistles. You need a wristwatch. Um, uh, the biggest thing you're going to spend money on is your 20 second timer. Um, 20 second timers are about 50 to 70 bucks. Um, and they're really important. Uh, there are very important counts that we do in lacrosse. And one of them is a 20 second count. Um, you can't do it visually. You can't do it in your head. So you'll need to buy a 20 second timer. I've got a whole little section right here on 20 second timers. Um, and I've got the, 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 the prices that I've seen. Right. Um, there you go. That's pretty much the deal there. Uh, anybody have questions on uniforms, anything like that? Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh crap! I wasn't muting. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm probably hearing some stuff. Um, does the shirt have to have the GSAJ logo? Yeah, you need the GHSA logo. So it should have. If you look right here, it should have the GSA logo above the pocket um, mm -hmm. and the American flag on the side. All of this stuff is sublimated now. Um, you know, the little lady that used to sew all my patches on. I haven't seen her in years, man. Um, yeah, I usually when I order. Yeah. That, I so sure again, I any place that you can get a GHSA officials football shirt, that's okay. what you got, and the links are all there. Do not get the basketball shirt. Remember, the basketball shirt has the V neck collar and it's got no pocket, right? Yep. Um, so don't get the basketball shirt. Make sure you're getting um, the the GHSA football shirt. There's right? another good store called Purchase Officials. If yeah, I, I need to. I, I think they were there, and then they weren't doing stuff. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put them on the list. Like if you um, order, if that. you order today, it'll probably be at your house by Tuesday at the late. Yeah, well, today, I'll, Wednesday, I'll, put the, I'll put them on the list um, uh, sooner rather than later. All right, we're gonna jump into it because we've got a lot of stuff to cover, um, and I want to make sure um, that we get into all of this. Wait a second, what's the order we're doing this in? We are doing this in. We want to first do, right? So we're going to do, all right, positioning out of bounds and then substitutions and restarts. Okay, so we do desktop two. Okay. 
computer. All right. Oh, am I sharing the wrong screen? I am sharing the wrong screen. All right. All right. This is this is the real deal. This is the not necessarily the rules. We're going to cover sort of what's a foul and what's not a foul um, in a later presentation. The most important thing you can do right now is be in the right spot. 90% of this game is just being in the right spot. So we're going to talk about positioning. You're going to get a, a little bit more of a feel for kind of what a lacrosse game really does look like, right? So you really want to beat the ball to the goal line and the goal, right? One official needs to be uh, staying ahead of the ball. Um, you want to maintain a wide triangle between you and your partner. If you are looking across the field and you see your partner, one of you is definitely in the wrong space and maybe both of you are in the wrong spot, okay? Um, so you want to maintain that wide triangle and you want to focus on your responsibilities, right? Anticipate where you need to be next. And we will talk more and more and more about it. It sounds really simple. It sounds really easy. It is one of the harder things to do when you're a sports official, right? So there's basically two um, officials in a two-man game. Um, one of them is going to be the lead official. That is the official that is covering the goal where play is happening, okay? The lead needs to run. The lead needs to get to his goal or her goal to make sure that you are in the spot to see whether somebody scores or somebody's in the crease or what's going on there, right? Their primary key, their primary responsibility is the goal right in front of them. Um, in transition, you want to stay about a zone ahead of the ball. I'll kind of get into that once we start showing some diagrams. Um, and as I referred to when we talk about counts, um, when a team is in possession of the ball, carrying, cradling, passing, shooting, and they cross the midline, they have 10 seconds to step it into what we call the attack box. And the lead is always going to have that initial 10 count. And that is going to be a physical, visual count. It's not verbal, but you're doing one, two, three. And when they step it in, you're going to give the signal that steps it in. We have a separate thing you guys will do for homework to talk about counts. Um, you are responsible for your sideline and the end line down by the goal that you are responsible for, right? One of the things that, that early on you realize in a three-man game is that you are responsible as the lead official for everything until your partner gets in position. We say it's a one-person game until the trail is in position. And the trail is your other guy. The trail is the guy coming up behind the play. They're going to jog. There's no need for the trail to race forward, right? We've already got a guy up there. The trail is the big picture guy, right? The trail's primary responsibility is the goal behind them, right? They're going to be even or slightly behind the ball as they move up field in transition. They are responsible for the four count as let's say the goalie makes a save. The goalie has four seconds as soon as they get possession, carrying, cradling, passing, shooting. And you do a visual count, right? When the goalie passes the ball out or steps out, you just drop your arm. Um, they're also responsible for the 20 count. A defense has 20 seconds to get it from their defensive end once they gain possession until they cross the midline. You're going to flip your timer so that you can focus on other things and you're not going one Mississippi, two Mississippi, you know, 18 Mississippi, all that kind of stuff. They're responsible for their sideline, their end line, and when they get into position for the midline, right? I'm going to say this a 
thousand times. Trail watches the shooter. The trail is responsible for watching what happens to the guy that shoots on goal. The trail should rarely know if a goal has been scored. The trail should know how the shooter got on the ground and what that contact was. This means you've got to trust your partners. Your partner is the lead. He is responsible for the goal and whether a goal is scored and all of that stuff. You are responsible for the trail official. Now, what's going to happen, and we all of us have gone through this growing process, is you're going to want to watch the ball, right? If you grew up watching your kids play or you were a coach or you were a player, you have trained yourself to watch the ball and watch the play. You have to become a good off-ball official if you really want to be good at this, right? Um, because if the trail gets, if the shooter gets killed and the trail is watching the ball, you're going to be the only person that doesn't see that kid get killed, right? So the trail watching the shooter is the number one job of the trail official. So let's talk about places to be on a lacrosse field, right? Um, I know this kind of looks wacky. It's pretty simple. There's basically four places to be, four places on this side and four places that are identical on the other side. So, um, right, goal line extended. If you're the lead official, you're going to be on what we call GLE, the goal line extended. Now, that is the 10-yard line on a standard field. Um, if you stand right on the 10-yard line and you look down at the goal, all you're going to be looking at is an orange bar. You're not really going to see much. So when I say GLE, I actually mean kind of like a step above GLE or a step below GLE. We'll talk about that in a sec. But you are going to move kind of in and out as play allows, right? If they're not players in front of you, you're going to slide towards the goal. If the ball goes to your bench sideline, you're going to slide back out, right? So you're kind of moving in and out. Now, if the ball goes to the end line, you need to go to the end line. You're the only person who can make that end line call as to whether somebody's out of bounds or who was the last to touch the ball, right? If you are the trail official, the top of the box is your spot. We say five yards in and five yards up from the top of the box. That basically puts you on the hash marks five yards in from the wing line right? That is where you're going to kind of camp out. Um, now, you're not going to do what we call, uh, you're not going to bury your feet in concrete and what we say, we say the phrase kill dirt uh, or kill grass. Um, what you're going to do is I like to kind of do a, if the ball goes to my left, I'm going to take a couple of steps to my left. If the ball goes down towards the end line, I may take a step towards the end line. If the ball comes back, I may take a step to my right. Uh, it's kind of the three-step cha-cha. You're sort of always putting yourself in a position to see the big picture. The trail is the big picture guy. Now, when we decide that we are going the other way, there's an interception, there's a, the goalie has made a save, and now the defense is in possession of the ball, that trail is going to, on the bench side, or the, the far side, is going to go to the cone. And I want you to run to the cone because you are the person who has to officiate that midline. We need to determine whether people are off sides or not, who can come over, who can play the ball, all those kind of things. Once you are a thousand percent convinced that a team is going to move the ball into their offensive end, you're going to need to run to GLE. This is why we say the lead runs. And you're going to get down to GLA and you want to stay basically one of these big lines ahead of the ball. It is really hard in a two-man game. This is why when you watch college games, um, they've got three officials. And when you watch pro lacrosse, they have four, right? These kids move fast. So you're going to run down to GLE and you're going to sort of repeat the entire, entire process. Now, the new trail official, initially, he's going to have that four count. He's going to turn his 20-second timer on at the same time. He's going to slide down. We don't want to go to the sideline here. 
um, that little area in the substitution area, um, that's where players are coming on and off. I call it the Bermuda Triangle. Like nothing good can be found in this area. Um, you can get kind of run over. So you want to go to either the bottom, the middle, or the other side of the midline because you're kind of responsible for the secondary offsides, right? Your partner's now down by GLE. You have slid up to the midline. You're checking to see, hey, is everybody on sides? And then you are going to slide into your trail position. Five yards in, five yards up from the top of the box, right? And we just kind of repeat this over and over and over again. Now, when you do this, you don't necessarily need to run in straight lines. You might sometimes need to run in a straight line to get to GLE really quickly. If the play is developing slowly, you can kind of banana in and see what's going on. But the if you find yourself on the field and you don't necessarily know where to go, you're going to be at goal line extended or the end line or the sideline. If you're a, a lead official, you're going to be at the top of the box moving to the sideline or moving up to the midline. And if there's transition, you go to the cone or you go to the wing. So let me show you what that actually looks like in a diagram, right? So let's assume the ball is moving towards the right of our screen here. The lead's going to move in and the lead's going to move out. The lead may go to the sideline if there's a play at the sideline. The lead may go to the end line if there's a play at the end line. And you're going to come, you're going to move in and out depending upon where the ball is. Um, if the ball goes to the sideline for the trail, he's got to go to the sideline. And you're going to slide back in. You may slide up to the midline and you may decide, oh God, this is a turnover. You become the lead. You go straight to goal line extended. Get to the spot that you need to be in. You can always officiate backwards. For those of you guys who do football, if you're a wing guy and you're inside the five-yard line, what do you do? You go to the goal line and then you can officiate backwards, right? Get to your spot and officiate the game. Um, trail me? officials are going to take their time. Excuse right. me? Yeah. Do you have to be 18 to officiate these games? Uh, yes, you do need to be 18. You need okay. to be 18 and out of high school. Okay, bye. Um, all right. Um, once you get to the cone, you're going to check for offsides, and then you're going to slide into your spot. Right? So that that is going to happen 10 million times during a game. You're going to the left and then you're going to the right. You're switching from lead. Now you're becoming the new trail. You're the trail and now you're the new lead. So let's watch that in sort of video format here. Right. Let's see here. So we got a trail official. He's got his 20 second timer going. Note that he does not get ahead of the ball. His primary responsibility is the goal behind him. Watch the guy at the top of the box. He's running to goal line extended, right? That's his end line. So he's got to make that call as to who's going to get the ball. And now he's going to take this restart. Meanwhile, our trail has come into position. So let's watch that again. All right? The trail never hurries. There's no need to rush. You get the big pass. Oh, God. Let me do this. So you will see, here's the official that was the new lead. He was on the cone. We had a long pass, and now he needs to bust his tail all the way down the field in order to get to GLE. You get a shot, and the question is going to be who's closest to the ball, when and where it goes out of bounds. And then we're just going to set up for the regular play. I, sorry, I have a question. Sure. Um, again, just coming from the football world, it, it looks like you're fairly close to action. So 
you're not worried about getting run over or the ball kind of hitting you or anything like that. Um, uh, the, when you're right in the, in the, when you're doing crease play and you're right in the thick of it, you are pretty close to the action. Um, you, you got to kind of get used to that. It's kind of like being an umpire. Yeah. Right. You, but you get run over every once in a while. I mean, I can count on kind of one hand how many times I've been run over. Um, and it's actually not by the crease that you usually get run over. It's usually somebody substituting on the field when you're not looking or it's on the faceoff. And we'll talk about both of those situations. Usually, you know, you, you sort of move in depending upon where those players are. When we get to the crease play, it'll make a lot more sense. It'll make a okay. lot more sense. Thank you. Um. All right. So now we're going to talk about on and off officials, right? Um, we have two sets of eyes. We've got 20 players on the field. We cannot have both sets of eyes watching two guys, one with the ball and one playing. Them. We got to have one set of eyes on the ball uh, and the player with the ball um, and the defender. And we've got to have one guy watching everything else. We call this the on official. He is focusing on what is happening to and around the player in possession, right? Now, most calls are made by an on official, right? You can push, you got a push call, a hold call, a slash call, a trip, illegal body checks. Those are the things that an on official are going to call. And we'll get to what those fouls are later. The off official watches everything else. They're watching for illegal screens, and interference. Those are the calls that an off official is going to make. And the way we determine who those officials are is we're going to divide the field up like this. We divide the box at a 45 degree angle. And so the lead official is going to have this blue area, the alley, and this light blue area. And the trail official is going to have the kind of the midfield area, no, you know, just north of the restraining line, as well as his alley. When the ball is in your zone, you're the on official. When the ball is in somebody else's zone, you're the you're the off official, right? And just like we switch between lead and trail, we are going to switch between on and off ball responsibilities. Okay. Um, one of the things that will happen is sometimes you get right into these areas where it's a little tight and you're kind of like, I don't know whether or not, um, I'm the on or the off official. If you can see the front of the player, you are the on official. If you see the back of the player, you are the off ball official. That's the best rule. I will literally yell out. I've got the ball. I've got the ball to make it clear to my partner what my what I think my responsibilities are, right? So this is kind of what a lacrosse field will look like with all the bodies on it, right? We're, we're, we're play is on the right-hand side here, right? Blue is guarding red, uh, and the red guy at the top um, uh, of the midfield area by the face-off X, he's got the ball. This means that our trail official is the on-ball official, right? So he's he's watching these two guys. That means our lead has absolutely everything else, okay? When a pass is made, those responsibilities are going to shift. Um, now, it's pretty clear here that the trail can't watch everybody. So you've really got to have your head on a swivel um, so that you're kind of seeing what's happening. If guys are standing really far away from each other, they're probably not going to do anything. Um, so you kind of want to focus in on um, uh, where you think play might happen. Okay. And again, these things are going to switch repeatedly. Let's watch a live example of this. So you will see right at the bottom of your screen here, you see this guy, he's our trail official. He is five yards in from the corner here and five yards up. And we have our lead official right down here. This is a typical sort of youth game. This may be a tournament, um, but you're going to see what these guys do. So there's our trail and there is our lead official and the ball 
you can see white is passing it. We call this getting it around the horn, right? They're passing it around in a big circle, sort of setting up their offense. Um, you're going to see 10 is going to get it. He's going to pass and he is going to cut, which means we are going to have this guy drive. Take a shot. And off we go. Now, you will notice. Let me back it up just a little bit. Look at what the trail official is watching. He is watching the shooter. He is completely responsible for calling anything illegal in regards to contact that has to do with the shooter. That is his primary responsibility here. You will notice that the lead official, he is responsible for the ball and the goal. There's no goal scored. We missed the cage here. And so he has got to be responsible for awarding possession as the shot goes out of bounds. And as we know, a shot out of bounds is given to the team that is the player that is in bounds, legally equipped, closest to the ball when and where it goes out of bounds. In this case, it's clearly white. And we see our official pointing in that direction. Right. So now we're going to start it up again. Note, I'm going to point this out real quick. Did you see the trail official also point in that direction? He is letting the coaches and the bench and his partner know that he, he saw that his partner award the ball. And so he is going to give the ready signal. We are going this way on the restart. That is a great job of communicating information to all parties. So let's watch this same sequence again, right? We're going to pass it up to the MIDI up top. We'll pass it around the horn. So now the trail is the off-ball official. The trail now becomes the on-ball official. right? And then we clear out, and we've got our midfielder dodging. Right? And we award possession. right? That's going to happen, again, a gazillion times a game. Here's another example. Right, lead is the on. Now the trail's the on ball. Trail's still the on ball. Now the lead is the on ball official. Now the trail is the on ball official, right? We just, depending upon where the ball goes, if it's in your zone, you're the on ball official, okay? So lead in settled situations. This is a great example, Adam, to your question. Um, you know, are there going to be bodies around? Um, you can be even with bodies if they're slightly above you and you're at GLE. You can have a, a bunch of players below you. It's really the question of when you get bodies in front of you because that closes out your view of the goal. Um, so... Uh, Again, you want to be slightly above or slightly below. I'm definitely a below GLE kind of guy. That's that's where I settle in. Um, but depending upon if there's no one around me, I might settle in above so I can get a better angle at what's happening on the other side of the crease because whatever happens around the crease is my responsibility. Um, so that's kind of your sweet spot right there. If you are out by the football numbers, you are too far away. Your sweet spot is right inside those hash marks. That's where you want to find yourself, okay? Now, um, as play happens, you want to crash the crease. You want to be standing right there as there's a shot, as there's bodies coming into the crease, right? So I said, here we are. This guy is seemingly in perfect position. But because of those players, he can't really see. You can slide down a little bit or slide up a little bit to give yourself a better angle as to what's happening. You really need to be dynamic. Here's a classic example of um, the ball is what we call at X. So the ball is down here, okay? Um, and we've got a defender right here. It's kind of in the way. Um, you don't have to be on GLE all the time. It is perfectly acceptable for you to back out of the passing lane 
slide back over to GLE. And as the ball moves, you continue to move in. So let me show you that again. If you're in the passing lane, you can back out towards the end line, right? As soon as that pass happens, you slide yourself back into position. So let's watch these guys do their thing. Right, lead is the on-ball official. We got a goal scored. That lead is going to come in, signal goal, get the ball, and we're moving on. But do you see how he crashes as the play comes to the goal? Right on those hash marks. Backs out a little bit, and he's walking in right as it happens. You want to be right there when it happens. OK, and the more reps you do, you'll get a sense for what players are trying to do. Again, sp spacing is really important in lacrosse offenses, right? You tend not to have a gaggle, a crowd of people sort of running, running around unless you're doing a youth game. If you do a U10 game, it's sort of like bobblehead dolls with sticks. Um, but when you're at the, the, the JV and sort of varsity level, spacing is really important. So it, there's a lot more room than you might think. All right, here's another example. All right, so our midfielder has got the ball. He's coming up to the 30 here. Um, he's passing it down. We pass it over. All right, you see how the, 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 the lead is is sort of adjusting his position. The trail is adjusting their position to get a good view of what is happening. All right, trail is floating towards the sideline, leads right there on those hash marks. Lead comes, or trail comes closer to the sideline as he dodges down that sideline. Lead backs out, lead slides back in. Right. This is great positioning by these guys. Also, just FYI, all the clips I'm using, these are GLOA officials. These are these are the games you're going to do. Right. I'm not showing you fancy guys up in Maryland or or in 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 Massachusetts or in Connecticut. Right. Th these are our guys doing our games. Right. Uh, responsibilities on a shot. Remember, trail watches the shooter. So you've got a shot. Lead's going to crash the crease. They are responsible for the for the goal. The trail has to be laser focused on what is happening with the shooter. Right. Um, let me show you how close crease play can be. And we're going to do an entire separate unit on just officiating the crease. This is a great move here. I mean, I have watched this clip I have watched this clip for five years in super slow-mo and high def. Doesn't look like he's in the crease to me, right? Remember, no offensive player can be in the crease. The lead is the only person who can make this call. And if you are standing out by the numbers, you can be right and nobody's going to believe you. But if you're close and you're wrong, nobody really has a case to argue with you, right? Be in the right spot. And you have a, a foot to stand on. If you're in a wrong spot, it doesn't matter whether you're right or wrong. You've got to be in the right spot. That's the key. That's the key lesson here. Right? And it happens fast. It happens quickly. All right. So let's talk a little bit about transition, right? How do we go from being the lead to being the new trail? How do we go from being the trail to being what we call the new lead, right? So we've got a shot. Goalie's going to make a save. You're crashing the crease as the lead. You want to make sure everything's 
hunky dory, right? You're going to have the initial four count and 20 count. They start simultaneously with possession, carrying, cradling, passing, shooting. And then, right, that new lead is going to have to get to the cone, right? They're going to check for offsides and they're going to hold the midline until they're sure the ball is going to cross. Right. The lead's got to stay ahead of the ball. So as the ball comes up, it's clear nobody's really playing blue here. So the lead is going to keep going. Now, the trail is going to come up slowly. They're going to check for secondary offsides. Remember, we don't want to go to the sideline here. We don't want to get in the Bermuda Triangle. Um, and then we're going to slide into our position five yards up, five yards in. Okay. Let's watch this transition, All right? So here's the lead getting ahead of the ball. He's got that initial 10 count. He got a goal and he's gonna run straight to the crease. He's watching the players and we signal goal, All right? That's kind of how quickly transition can happen. Uh, let me show you an example of being in the wrong spot. We've all been here. We have all been 30 yards away and you're the only person that can make the call, right? But that's a really tough call to sell. I've watched that video. This is probably a 10 year old video. I've watched this a thousand times. I have no idea whether that was the goal. I have no idea. I have I have slowed it down. I've showed it to a million people. I, I cannot tell you whether that was a goal or not, but our job is to make a call, right? Um, and so that's what's got to happen. So let's let's see this in slow-mo and see whether you can tell me. Right? Now, this is what you're going to hear. Find another profession. Why are you doing this? Hey, we are out there. Right, you're going to be out there, and and you can be one of the top referees in the country, and you can screw this stuff up. Put yourself in the right position, and it's really hard to argue with your decision making. Right, be 30, 40 yards away, and no matter who they are, whether they like the call or not, it's really hard to sell a call when you're this far away. Anticipating um, is going to be really helpful by doing lots of games and watching lots of game film. The better you can anticipate where play is happening, um, what a team is doing, how quickly they might turn the ball over is going to be really helpful for you. All right. Again, here's a classic example of trail watches the shooter. Right. That is not a call that the lead can make. That's not their responsibility. They have to know whether the ball is in the goal. They have to know whether there's been a crease violation. And if the ball misses the goal, they need to make sure they are um, making a call on the end line. This is not their responsibility. The only person who needs to be watching this is the trail official. Right? Now, remember, when we go to the end line, there's going to be bodies diving right? We want to make sure we are straddling the end line on this call and making a quick and decisive decision. Remember, it is the body of the players, not the cross, that determines who's going to get a shot. Closest to the ball, when and where it goes out of bounds, as long as you are a legally equipped player on the field of play, right? You can't be out of bounds. Um, so getting right to that end line Making those couple of steps towards the end line is a really important thing that you need to do when you are the lead official. All right, here's a great example. All right, look at the official put himself in the best position, even though no one's really contesting it. They put themselves in a position that if anything happens, they are there to see it and make the call. And then where do they go? They go right back to GLE and they go right to the hash marks, right? This is his responsibility. He's running out towards the sideline to, to make that call. 
right? Trail responsibilities, same thing's gonna happen, right? You might get a shot and it may ricochet off the pipe. You're watching the shooter. Once you're fine with that, you've got to run to the sideline to determine who's the guy closest to the ball when and where it goes out of bounds, right? Your responsibilities are going to change on a dime. Um, but in fairness, you're responsible for the shooter. You're responsible for the sideline. You're responsible for the goal behind you. You're responsible for the end line behind you. Your keys will always put you in the right position. All right, let's take a five minute break. We'll come back, uh, get some water, stretch your legs. Um, we will come back at um, uh, 825 and we will um, do our thing. All right, guys.
All righty. All right, we're talking about out of bounds and offsides. This will be pretty quick. Um, remember, uh, a loose ball touching on or beyond a boundary line um, or breaking a plane uh, is awarded to the team that did not last touch it. Think basketball, right? Um, a player in possession is out of bounds if player or cross touch the boundary line or beyond. Remember, you got to touch something out of bounds. Right. So if you're in the air and you have not landed out of bounds yet, you still can play. Um, you can run down the sideline with your stick hanging over the sideline. That's completely fine. A shot is different. Um, you award the ball to the inbounds player closest to where it went out of bounds. So uh, this is a pretty good example here. So here's our player running up the field. That's a legal hit. Ball goes out of bounds. White was the last to touch it. So green, green ball. Okay. Quickly, quickly do our restart, right? So out of bounds mechanics. You are going to do this a million times a game. When the ball goes out of bounds, your hand goes up, your whistle comes up and you blow your whistle. Um, I joke with people when I teach this class that as a teacher, it's really hard for me to raise my hand and ask a question because I want to bring my whistle up to my mouth um, and 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 blow my whistle, okay? Um, hand up is the dead ball signal. You are blowing your whistle and putting your hand up to let everybody know that play is dead, okay? A lot of times when you do these games, you're going to have the timekeeper up in the press box. They might not hear your whistle, but they will see your signal. Um, you then need to point and award the ball. Who gets the ball, right? So you are going to point in the direction play is going, and you are going to say one color and the word ball, right? Don't just say green. When, you, when you're screaming across a field, uh, having that hard consonant in the second word makes the first word a lot easier to hear. It's a linguistic thing. So instead of yelling green, Say green ball, people will hear it better, okay? Um, you don't wanna say out on white and then it touch, you just say who's getting the ball. Does it, none of the other stuff matters, keep it simple. You also wanna hold your point for a second because remember, your partner is not watching what you're watching. So you need to make sure your partner knows where you're going. When he hears the whistle, he will look across the field, don't point and then drop your hand. Hold that point for a couple of seconds. Then you're gonna put your hand back up in the air because we need to make sure we have a ball. We need to make sure everybody's in bounds. We need to make sure that your partner's ready to play. And once you're ready to play, you are gonna give what we call winding it in, right? Or winding the clock. You're gonna do two backstrokes and blow your whistle. That tells the timekeeper and your partner that we're now playing again, start the clock. OK, so you will do this sequence. Hand up, whistle. Red ball and point. Hand back up until you're ready to play. And then from there, you wind the ball back in. OK, it's a complete backstroke. Every single time. So let's watch this guy. Why aren't you doing what you're supposed to be doing? Let's see if I can do it manually. All right, that's never really happened to me before, but hey, first time for everything. All right, here we go. Ball goes out of bounds. He points, hand back up, wait for the player to be inbounds, stationary, and then we wind it in, All right? Ball out of bounds, hand up, point. Hand back up. 
step on the field, wind it in, right? That's a perfect example. Um, here's another one. Right here, red misses the pass. Ball goes out of bounds. So our official says, hey, you guys were the last to touch it. He points upfield. You can see that hand up in the air. He's waiting for the player to come back on the field. And what's our, what's our new lead doing? He's running up to the cone, right? We are in transition. So watch that again. Misses the pass, hand up, whistle, point, hand back up. Great job by the lead official there, right? We've talked about this before, right? You got to be inbounds closest to where the ball goes in and out. Here's another great example. We have a shot and hand back up. We're waiting for the player to come back inbounds. So remember, lead is responsible here for the far sideline and this end line. And the trail is responsible for their sideline. And they are responsible for the midline right now. And they're going to be responsible for this end line, right? So when these balls go out of bounds, very specific people have that call, right? And when the trail comes up, the new trail, he's gonna take the midline responsibility. So ball out on bench side, trail's gotta get to that sideline, right? That's really key. So here we go, end line, right? It is not who's closest to the line. It is closest to when the ball goes out of bounds and where the ball goes out of bounds. So watch where this shot is. The shot goes out over here. So this is gonna be Black's ball, right? Hands up. He's gonna put him in the exact spot where the ball went out of bounds. And then we're gonna restart the play. Great job by the official here, right? In perfect position. Offsides. Um, offsides is pretty simple. It's one of the hardest calls to make in lacrosse because things are happening really quickly, right? You are allowed to have no more than seven defensive players. So you're going to have your three defensemen, your three midfielders, and your goalie on defense. Can't have more than seven. You cannot have more than six when you are playing offense. Okay. Three attackmen, three midfielders. Doesn't really matter who the positions are. All you know is you're allowed seven bodies on defense and seven bodies on offense. Right. Um, you are not offsides if you have too few players. There's no advantage to having too few players. So if you have two guys, um, back there, it doesn't matter. The only thing we are focused on is where play is happening. What is happening behind us, unless there's too many players, is irrelevant. Um, the lead is going to have that initial offsides in transition. This is the thing I want you to remember. Count forwards. Count your offensive players first. You know you have three attackmen. So all you have to do is count three midfielders as you're running up in transition. The reason we count offense first is that it's a heck of a lot easier to put the ball in the back of the net if you've got an extra guy. Count offense first. If you've count six and you're good, move on to the defense. If defense is offsides and they've got eight guys or nine guys, you can throw a flag and you will be late. And everybody will be like, that's a late flag. How can you throw it? The reason I'm late is because I'm counting the offense first. It is better to be late and right than early and wrong when you are dealing with offense, uh, when you're dealing with offsides. Um, and the other thing you really want to be doing is you're always counting. Football guys, you know this. The one time you don't count that you've got 11 is the time that you've got too many guys, right? You got to count every single play. Dead ball, do I have the right number of guys? In transition, do I have the right number of guys, right? Settled play, how many guys do I got? ABC, baby, always be counting. That's going to help you. 
you count A first and B second. If I'm the lead official, I count offense, then I count defense. If I'm the trail official coming up slowly, I count offense, and then I count defense. And then the ball goes out of bounds, and both of us count again. This is how you do uh, offsides in lacrosse. You always have to be aware of how many players you have on the field for each team. Right? So here we go. Leads coming down. Um, we've got all these guys. So we've got three uh, attackmen and we've got, there's our fourth, there's our fifth, sixth. Oop, one guy stepped over, right? That's going to be, that's going to be um, offsides. Trail's going to count again, right? And our signal for offsides, same thing in football, right? It's an automatic whistle and a technical foul like this Red's got the ball. You're simply going to give the ball to blue. Make sure everybody's on sides and restart play. How technical do you call that? How what? How, I'm sorry. How like? Mm -hmm. How technical do you call that? Well, in, in a nor, in, in a nor, let's say a normal varsity contest, right? Because I'm sure it all depends, but. I mean, if you if you've come over the line, you're off sides. Right. Okay. This is the thing you got to remember. Every single one of these games is videotaped. Every single one. I can get video on any game that's been done in the last three years in Georgia Lacrosse. Now, if he steps on the line and there's nobody around, I mean, I could always say, well, I, I wasn't really sure if he was on the line or not on the line. But if he runs across to the other side of the field, he's off sides. Right. It's it's what it's what we call the obvious foul. Right. And so in, in the youth game where it's 27 to nothing and the losing team ran off sides, I might tell Billy to get back. But in a high school varsity game, if you're off sides, you're off sides. Right. You you can't miss that call um, because, you know, it, literally before you get in your car, somebody's going to send me that video. Right. That's a man up opportunity. If it's the defense, are you going to take away a man up opportunity for something that clearly was true? Um, so when you're talking about line calls, you just got to get those right. You don't have a lot of there's not a lot of subjectivity in that. Um, right. So we're going to count our offensive guys. We got six. Right. Seven. Right. We're going to count again. Offsides. Let's watch this clip and you can kind of get a sense for what's happening. All right? White clears over. What is blue done? Blue has fallen over. He's now off sides. Now to give you a sense, did the coach that is now about to get a man up see that? Yeah. You can't say to the coach, well, that's not going to affect the play. Right. He wants his man up. He wants a flag. He knows the rule. You better throw that. OK. Um, right. Here's another example. Right. Red just stepped over. There comes the flag. You can't miss the obvious ones, right? The hit to the head, the stepping off sides, the in the crease. Those are the big ones that everybody sees. And if you don't call those, the question becomes, what else are you not calling? Now, there are a lot of subjective calls that we'll get to when we do penalties. But the clear, now, if he was towing the line and maybe he touched the line and maybe he didn't, that's something you can be like, hey, coach, I didn't see that. Maybe I missed that. But your default setting is I might have missed that. Not it didn't affect the game because if he was off sides, it clearly affects the game because they're in possession of the ball. That's going to be a man up situation. Right, here's another good example. All right. We run on the field. Here we go. One, 
two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five. Wait, hold on. I counted wrong. I can't even do it on video. Oh, here we go. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Blue, dark blue ran too many guys out on the field. All right, they're clearly offsides here. This is why we count offense first. All right, I can show you that again. So seven's carrying the ball. We've got two, three, four, five, six. Now you got a seven. Seven would have been fine carrying the ball over, but another guy came over, right? So that's kind of that's kind of the deal there. Offsides, really tough to do. Um, let's talk really quickly about substitutions. Again, I want to be um, I want to be respectful of your time, but we do have a lot of stuff to cover. Uh, substitutions and restarts. Oh, I'm sure the same one. Here we go. All right, substitutions and restarts, right? Uh, players can substitute on the fly, think hockey, one on, one off. Um, you have to substitute during live ball play through the substitution area and players exiting the field of play have the right of way. Coming off the field, you have to defer to that person coming off the field. You can't delay entry onto the field to gain an advantage. You've got to be properly equipped and you got to be on sides. So substitution area right down there. So blue runs on, blue can, blue runs off, blue can run on. Red steps off, red can step on. And they've got to remain in their respective um, onside positions. Now, the substitution area, it's 10 yards wide. So as somebody comes off, you don't have to run on on the same spot. You can go to the other side of the field and teleport yourself essentially 10 yards down the field, right? Let's see that again, right? White's gonna go to the other cone. And as this guy runs off, he comes on. Now, remember, you are not on the field. Right, so here comes White. He is not on the field until he touches right there. You are not in bounds until you are completely touching and not touching out of bounds. You have to be touching inbounds and not touching out of bounds. So people are going to yell, he left early, he left. He's not in bounds until he steps in bounds. Here's an example. All right, we're going to have a shot here. Goalie makes a really nice save. Defender picks it up. And we have white guys down here at the bottom running off and substituting on. Okay, this is what we call on the fly substitutions. Here comes number four. He's subbing in for the clearing team now. All right, here's a here's an example. In this case, red runs off the field. Red runs on the field, but he doesn't go through the actual substitution area, right? He has to be at the 45 
And he just runs on the field. Number seven here just runs on the field. This is where he needs to substitute in. Okay. Um, restarts. You've got a dead ball. You've called a foul. You're awarding it to the other team. Ball's gone out of bounds. You're awarding it to a team. What you want is basically it's roughly five seconds to be ready to play. Now, if a kid's trying to go get the ball and he's got to dig it out of the branches or the bushes or a fence, that's fine. He's trying to actively get the ball. Um, you can give a five second count if no one wants to pick up the ball. And if nobody picks up the ball within five seconds, you can award it to the other team. In 24 years of doing lacrosse, I think I've done that once. And it was just chickens with their head cut off. Everybody was running around like idiots. Okay. Um, no offensive player, period, can be within five yards of somebody restarting the ball. You cannot have an offensive player within five yards, right? Um, you're never going to restart the offense in the attack box. You're always going to move them out um, uh, unless it's an awarded shot. Um, out of bounds, right? So the ball went out of bounds and you awarded it to the offensive team. They'll take it in right there on the end line um, or you call timeout on the end line. Um, defense can restart anywhere. They can restart in the crease. They can restart in the in, in their in their attack box, right? Remember, I talked about either your hands up and you're saying dead ball or you are pointing. When the ball's dead, you should either be like, hey, 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 we got to slow down here. This the, the double hands up is the big stop sign, right? Or you're pointing and you're saying, hey, we're ready to play. Whenever you're ready to restart, we can restart, right? So you have the go sign or the stop sign. You're doing this on every single restart. And when I give the ready sign and the ball is blown in, I just drop my hand, right? Quick restarts. You do not need to wait for the defenders to give five yards, right? We used to have to be like, give them five yards, step back, you stop, you step back, everybody step back. And it was a pain in the butt. What we do now is a defender can be within five yards of the ball, but they have to allow the offensive player a direct path to the goal. And they have to give up five yards before they can actually play the player. It is not our responsibility to let the defender know that, okay? The onus is on the defender. So here's, a, here's an example of a quick restart, right? We're going to have a scrum here. This is Maryland, Virginia from a couple of years ago. Um, we got officials going to come in. He's going to say, look, I got I to hold. He gives the signal, and we're going to restart it. We have no offensive player within five yards defensive player never really gets a chance to play him we restart that is a completely legal very quick restart here's an example of a player who does not give five yards so white is going to play the ball we can blow it in red never gives him five yards immediately starts to play him that's a flag okay now to be clear if red had just, red could run all the way down the field. As long as he doesn't play him, he's fine. But if he doesn't give five yards, as soon as he plays him, it's a flag. You've got to give up five yards as a defender on a quick restart before you engage and play the opponent. Right. Here's an example of a restart where we had offensive players within five yards of each other. No one knows who the ball, who's got the ball. The other team is completely confused. Right. You want to make sure everybody knows who's got the ball on a restart. We do not want this hidden ball trick happening on a restart with offensive players next to each other. Right now, here's a completely legal hidden ball trick. This is during live ball play. These guys can all come next to each other. And then they go running off. Nobody knows who's got the ball. You can take a shot. Right. This is a 
hidden ball trick in the Navy Johns Hopkins game. Right, he gives him the fake flip. This guy drives hard, goalie's not looking. You score from 30 yards out, right? That's a completely legal play. You can't do it on a restart with an offensive player within five yards of you, okay? That's the key. Um, all right, restart locations, right? If you're at the top of the box, this is fine. You're going to restart the ball right there. Let's say you've got a loose ball push. You're going to award the ball to a team. That's totally fine. If you're in the alley, you're just going to restart it there. Right at the top of the restraining line is probably not a place you want to start it, right? Because remember, defense has to give up five yards. You don't want to give a free shot to somebody on the goalie from the top of the box. So you want to move a ball that would be in this red area to one of the corners at the top of the box, okay? Um, if you are in the box area and you're awarding it to the offensive team, you wanna move the ball laterally, right? You wanna move the ball laterally. Um, and if you have the ball for the defense, or if, if it goes out of bounds on a shot, you're gonna award it right there. Um, and if, it, if, if the ball goes out of bounds and you call a timeout, Either team, you're going to start the ball right where it comes in, right? The defense can start anywhere. The goalie can start with the ball in the crease, right? So here's an example. All right, we got a push. We're awarding it to red. You direct it into the alley. We're going to move it laterally. No offensive player within five yards. We're going to quickly restart. Okay. Oh, and somebody's got a question. Right. How do you know if you're going to be doing GHSA, GIA? Uh, you're probably going to do all of those things. You're going to do GHSA, GIAA, and youth, right? Um, in order to do GHSA, you have to register with Dragonfly. So make sure you guys are registering with Dragonfly. I'm going to talk to Landon tomorrow and see where we are with that. Right. Goalie privileges on restarts, right? If the goalie's out of the crease and you have a restart, the goalie always gets five seconds to get back into the crease, right? And you give a visual count as to those five seconds, right? Um if you realize that a restart has occurred and the goalie's out and you didn't give him five seconds, you stop the play and you say, hey, that's our mistake. Put the ball back over there. Let's get the goalie in the crease and we restart. Okay. Uh, here's a pretty great example of that. We are giving the ball to White. We do not stop this play. We just let it go. And the other official is like, oh, wait, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. We screwed this up. We put everybody where they need to be and we go to where the goalie in high school always gets five seconds. Right. Restarts on the end line. That lead official really needs to come down to make sure you're giving that five yard buffer. Right. If you have a contested play on the end line, get to the end line. Right. Here's a great example of that. Right. You're going to give the ball to White. White's going to take a shot. It's going to go out of bounds. White's closest to the ball. So our official, he's standing right there. We're not going to give him a running restart. We go back to where we were five yards, boom, restart. Everybody's good. We'll do it again. Okay, the ball's over there. We're going to bring the player back to where the ball actually went out of bounds. Right? They don't get to just restart anywhere on the end line. The ball went out here. This is where you restart. All right, here's another good example. Shot. Ball goes out of bounds, right? We're going to award it. We're going to give our goalie, watch the five count. We're giving our goalie five seconds. We move the player back to where the ball went out of bounds and we restart the play. 
Great job by this official. Right, restarts on the sideline. Right, remember you got to give five yards, so you want to have that trail official looking down to make sure that that defender is given five yards. Here we go. Ball's loose. He gets shoved from out of bounds. We are going to award the ball to Blue because it was a loose ball push. We make sure nobody's around him on his team and that the, off, the defense is clearly five yards away when we restart this play. So everything's all good. All right here are the tricky restarts, right? Restarts at the midfield, restarts in the crease, right? Th these are the ones that are hard. Here's an example of um, uh, the red team here is going to miss this pass. We're going to have this situation we call over and back, right? They're not. It, it's basically a backcourt violation. We'll talk about that later. We have a quick restart here. We have a defender that's within five yards of that restart, but he never plays him. So that's a quick restart, but you got to be real careful because you're going to have a lot of bodies and people running by. Uh, restarts on the midline can be tricky. Restarts near the sub box. Again, this is the area I call the Bermuda Triangle. If you are ever restarting the ball by the substitution area, by rule, we have to move the ball five yards in. Right? We don't want somebody coming through the substitution area and crushing that kid and he's not looking okay now most kids are like what do you mean five yards where am i supposed to stand sometimes i just say go to the wing 78 go right here stand here wait for me to blow my whistle right again the most important tool we have is our voice okay this is never a quick restart if you are restarting right by the substitution box, it's never a quick restart. It's always a slow restart. Deep restarts, okay? This is kind of a weird one. Um, here we've got the ball is on the trails sideline. Um, and we are going the other way. We're going right to left here. Right now, technically, this should be the trails ball and he should blow it in. But trail really needs to get to the wing, to the sideline, because they're the new lead. They need to get they're going to have to immediately run down the field. So what we do here is we basically make an agreement with our partner and we say, look, I'm going to put my hand up and I'm going to let you know that the ball is not ready to be blown in yet. And when the ball is ready to be blown in right, from this sideline. So we're going to move our red guy. Trail's going to come all the way in. He's just going to look at the at the new lead. When the ball comes in and there's no offensive players nearby and B blue is clearly five yards away, the new lead is going to give the ready signal. And as soon as you blow that ready signal, Trail blows his whistle. You are giving up a responsibility to your partner to blow it in. That happens a lot in lacrosse. Sometimes you'll see me do this. I'll be like, my whistle, my whistle, right? As long as we're blowing it in, it's good. But there are situations where it you kind of got to be going in a different direction and you can't really put your full attention on. This is what we call a deep restart. Here is a great example of that, right? So black is going to throw this ball away. Goes over his head, it goes out of bounds, right? This is clearly the, the new lead's responsibility, but watch the, the new trail. He's got his hand up. He's saying, hey, we're not ready. And as soon as he gets the point from his buddy, he blows it in. All righty, how did I do? Oh, I am spot on, people. I'm quite pleased with myself, right? It's the little things. Um, gentlemen, thank you very much again for, um, for, uh, uh, taking the time to, to, to sit with me and ask questions. Uh, Tim's got a question. Do players need to alert the ref before a substitution? No, all of this is on the fly, right? It's just literally, 
if one guy goes off, as long as you're legally equipped, you can come on the field, right? Um, uh, and so again, that's one of the reasons the trail official is gonna come up slowly. If I've got a lot of substitutions happening as the trail official, I may just park myself right by the cone to see what's happening, right? We're gonna go over a lot of this on our field day. When we do uh, our stuff at Pope High School on the 20th, we're gonna go over a lot of this on the field so that you get a really good sense of kind of where you're standing and what you're looking at, right? Um, uh, John James, I don't count by three. Um, I tend to, one thing when you do when you count, don't do this. You don't want to look like a school marm counting up like her little kindergarten kids, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, right? So I'll be like, one, two, three. I got those guys. I got one, two, three. I got six. Oops, seven. Oh, we're off sides, right? Then I'm going to count the defense. One, two, three. One, two, three. Sometimes I don't even count the first three because I know I've got three defenders and I, I know I have three attackmen. I really count the guys crossing the midline, right? I will take a glance and be like, we got three and three, we're good. All right, all I need to focus on is they're allowed three more guys to come over the field both times. And I rarely count the goalie. We can't play the game unless we have an, a legally equipped goalie. So I just assume the goalie is there, right? Um, all right. Um, and LT, uh, as far as when you get a game assigned to you, it will be clearly marked in Arbiter as a U13 youth game, as a GIAA game, or as a um, uh, a GHSA game, right? You All right. You know what's going on. Where is that link at to? For Arbiters? Yeah. Have you? So we haven't set up accounts for you guys yet. We'll be okay. doing this in the next week or so. But you All will right. get an invitation um, from Patrick Joyce, and you'll meet all oh. the owners on the 20th. Between Dragonfly and that one, I'm going to be... Dragonfly is only where you take the test. We do not use Dragonfly for assigning, and GHSA <laughs> makes us do that. Well, I got, you know, I got between football, yeah. basketball... Yeah, the only uh, thing you're going to get assigned <laughs> through is Arbiter. Arbiter, Dragonfly, Ref Town. <laughs> yeah, dude, I got Zebra Web. All my college games come from Zebra Web. Like, it's crazy talk. I got a, <laughs> I got 17 screens and I still can't figure it out. Um, all right, let, guys, uh, thank you again. I will be sending out the recording of this um, tomorrow. Um, you got a little homework. You're going to be watching a quarter of a game. I and a guy named Matt Costello officiated uh, at Decatur. Um, and I'm kind of narrating the first quarter in terms of positioning and what I'm looking at. Um, so hopefully you'll get a real sense for kind of how repetitive uh, this process can be. So if you really focus on the skills and the positioning, you will be great. All right, guys. See you next Wednesday. Thanks, all. Have a, have a great night. Thank you.